What's going on everyone? It's Alex. Hope everyone's doing well today. So as you're watching this video, I'll be on my way to the muffler shop. Gonna get the muffler delete done and uh, hope you guys will stick around and see how that sounds. But I really got to thinking today because one of the modifications I'm gonna be doing is installing some lowering springs. So I'll explain to you guys at a later time why I decided on lowering springs versus coilovers and why I picked the ones I did. So in preparing to install those lowering springs, it prompted me to call my local shop and make an appointment for an alignment. So that got me thinking. I really wanted to explain how important an alignment is. I think all too often people let alignments go to the wayside, they either may think it's too expensive or it's not important, but in reality they're not that expensive and it's a really important maintenance piece that can really make your car perform better, uh, your tires will last longer, and you actually get better gas mileage if your tires are properly aligned. So understanding alignment specifications may be a daunting task, it may be scary. I know it was for me when I first started out. So I want to try and help you guys understand, try to put it in simple terms, just give you, you know, like a summary and uh, help you better understand what goes into an alignment and how you can um, properly align your car to best suit your needs. The three main uh, alignment measurements are camber, toe, and caster. Caster really isn't adjustable from the factory uh, unless your car is pretty heavily modified, so we're not really going to talk about that. We're going to focus on camber and toe. So if you have a stock vehicle, you can pretty much take it to just about any tire uh, alignment shop, and their computer has a list of all the specs of every car, uh, so they'll be able to properly align it within those specs. It's a good idea to get an alignment after you replace any suspension parts, whether it be struts, springs, tie rods, anything like that, or I like to get an alignment, at least a check, once I get uh, new tires. You'd be surprised how quick a, uh, a bad alignment can eat up a set of tires. Camber is semi-adjustable with factory suspension components. There are some cars that have, um, you know, a small range of adjustments with the stock bolts or any adjustable control arms that may be offered from the factory. So basically, camber is the vertical tilt of your wheel. So if you have your wheel straight up and down here, if it's tilted in, to, if the top of the tire is tilted in towards the car, that's going to be negative camber. And if it's tilted out towards the outside of the car, that's positive camber. And most cars from the factory come with a slight degree of negative camber. And that just helps with overall turning, performance, um, just, you know, just basic handling of the car. So most cars from the factory will have more negative camber in the rear than in the front. And what this does is allow for understeer, which is the pushing of the front end um, if you're going into a corner super hard. So basically, understeer is a little bit safer for the average person, easier to correct than, say, oversteer, which is the back end of your car coming out. Now, when this changes, if you have aftermarket uh, suspension components that allows for an increase or a decrease of negative camber adjustment. So with my car, the 350Z that's behind me, I have adjustable camber both in the front and the rear. And this allows me to adjust camber based on the type of driving I'm going to be doing, whether I'm going to be doing mostly street driving or track driving. So I prefer to have a little bit of oversteer than understeer when running on the track. So to achieve that, I would run more negative camber on the front wheels than the rear wheels. Now, I won't get into track alignment setups just, just yet because that's more of a personal preference, what kind of car you have, you know, your driving skill level, and it's kind of like a trial and error. And there's a big misconception out there that a lot of negative camber causes quick tire wear. And this is partly true. I mean, if you're running a lot of negative camber, let's say to fit aggressive wheel setup um, or something along those lines, you know, over time you may get some, you know, wear on the inner part of the tire. However, the biggest culprit for abnormal tire wear is toe. So whereas camber is the uh, vertical movement of the tire, both in and out, toe is the horizontal movement of the tire. So let's say you have your wheels here on your car, your wheels and tires on your car. If they're, perp if they're set perfectly straight, that would be zero toe. If you, have the, if you have the front edges of the tires angled inwards, that's positive toe, toe in. And if you have too much um, toe in or positive toe, that could cause abnormal wear on the outside of your tire. And that's because as you're going along in your car, your tires are actually kind of, you know, snow plowing their way along the road and kind of dragging themselves along. And what that's going to do is that's going to grab the outside edge first and increase the abnormal wear on that outside edge. So toe out, or negative toe, is the pointing of the front of the tires outwards and the rear inwards. If you have an extreme situation where you have too much toe out, you're going to get too much wear on your inner part of your tire. 
So you may be asking, what does that have to do with handling or the performance of your car? Well, as I already stated, when you have too much toe in or toe out, your tires are dragging across the ground. So that's going to wear your tires out quicker, and if it's significant enough, it'll decrease your gas mileage because there's more resistance on the road. So again, most cars from the factory are set up pretty conservatively. The spec range for most cars for tow is pretty much near zero, which is a straight line. If anything, they may allow for some tow in, which is actually going to increase straight line performance and stability. So for most cars that are, are going to be driven, you know, on a daily commute, which is some highway driving, it's going to keep the car more stable at highway speeds. Tow, unlike camber, is readily adjustable on most factory cars via the front tie rods and rear uh, trailing arms or compensator arms. And again, if you use your car for anything else than daily driving, such as the track, you can mess with those tow alignments as well to better suit your needs. For example, on my 350Z, I have a slight degree of tow out, which is negative tow for the track. And what this uh, allows my car to do is it, it allows it to better react to turn in because the the tires are already pointed towards the turn whether it be left turn or right turn now obviously I'm exaggerating with my hands but the measurements are ever so slightly however that does help with uh, turn in response when using your car on a track on the contrary I have my rear tire set up with some slight toe in or positive toe and what this does is it keeps the rear end uh, a little bit more stable in uh, high speed straightaways. So again, if you use your car for anything other than daily driving, it's kind of a trial and error, whatever's going to work for you and, you know, the environment that you're going to be driving your car. There's not, uh, you know, some magic mathematical calculation that's going to get you the perfect alignment settings. My recommendation, however, is if you're using your car mostly for daily driving, you want your toe to be close to zero as possible. And again, any alignment shop you go to, they have set specifications for that vehicle and they're going to set it up in within those guidelines. So basically moral of the story is uh, a proper alignment plays a big role in how your car is going to drive, handle, perform, and how long your tires are going to last. A lot of people, uh, people that I know have installed lowering springs, coilovers on their car, you know, which lowers the car, which drastically affects the alignment, and they don't get it, uh, they don't get their vehicle aligned, and in six months, they need new tires. If you have tow, if both of your tires, say, are towed in, your car is not going to drift left or right, but your tires are still going to be dragging along the road as you drive. A good alignment shop can get your car within alignment specs, and it could stay there for quite a while. Depending on what kind of terrain you drive on, I know the roads around here in New Jersey are pretty rough, so I like to get my alignment checked about every year. It doesn't always need an alignment, but it's always good to get it checked, and the price of alignment is usually between $70 or $100, maybe $110, um, but that's so much cheaper than a set of tires, especially the set of tires that I use on my cars, which are quite expensive. So I hope this gave you a basic understanding of alignments and um, you know what's entailed to get a proper alignment. And I really hope you can make use of it, at least to better understand what's going on when someone aligns your car. If anyone has any further questions or would like um, some more detailed explanation of these alignment specs, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, you know, comment below, ask me whatever you need to ask me, and I'll be sure to respond. So stay tuned for updates on the G37. I can't wait to show you guys what I have planned, and I'm really excited. Next week is going to be filled with all the modifications to the car, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to be able to uh, film and put out there for you guys to watch. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, press that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.